Fallen Guillotine came out in Seasons of Arrival, and it's it's a really really good. I I use it for pretty much all of my boss DPS. So I'm gonna be telling you guys the God Roll and just a few things to help you guys with getting a little bit better damage output and just some builds in general. So let's get into it. But real quick, if you guys haven't already. I stream every day on Twitch. Go down there and check it out if you haven't already. Link in the description. Let's get into it. Okay, so Fallen Guillotine. There, there are a few roles with Fallen Guillotine, but this is the role I use personally. This is a really decent role in my opinion. And I'll tell you guys why. So I have Temper to Edge, which will increase my sword ammo and my sword damage. I have Sword Master's Guard. It lowers my defense overall, but increases my charge rate, which is amazing. And then you have Relentless Strike. Landing three light hits within a short period of time will grant you, sh uh, will grant you sword ammo. And that pairs really well with the next one, which is Whirlwind Blade. Rapidly sword striking increases this weapon's damage for a short duration. Guarding also ends the effect. So you can also pair this with something like boss spec, taken spec, if you're going to be using it for bosses, which is what I use it for, of course. Now, I use boss spec as I don't have taken spec, but also boss spec works completely fine. You don't really need taken spec, but if you're going up against a taken boss, like the prophecy dungeon boss, then I'd recommend popping on taken spec. So, Fallen Guillotine can roll with a few different rolls, as we can see here. I would recommend Tempered Edge, but you can also get Jagged Edge, or you can get Honed Edge. You have a few other guards also, Burst Guard, Heavy Guard, Sword Master's Guard, which is the one I recommend. And then you can see Relentless Strike, Tireless Blade, Surrounded, Whirlwind Blade, Counter Attack, and End Guard. On those main ones? I would recommend the top two. I wouldn't recommend using a, this sword in PvP unless you had to, but definitely get one of these two. I personally do Whirlwind Blade, but if you also want to rock Surrounded, that is okay. Now within Seasons of Arrival, you also can get the second perk. So you can actually get a roll with all of this, Tempered Edge, Swordmaster's Guard, Relentless Strike, and you can get Whirlwind Blade and Surrounded. And then you can pop on a surrounded spec and you would be able to do a lot more damage and alternate that is the perfect god roll if you were to be able to get one now myself i just thought this was fine and it 100 percent is i don't use surrounded that much myself plus i love doing prophecy so using a setup like this works perfectly fine for me all right if you don't have the fallen guillotine already well it's really not hard to get you can actually get one very easy with the season's pass. Now you can get one at rank 30 right here. You actually don't even have to have the season's pass to get it. Now you'll be able to get the fallen guillotine. This roll isn't that good, but it's okay for a starting fallen guillotine. Now, if you want to farm it, you will have to get the cold denial. And then once you have the cold denial, you're actually able to farm it. You can farm it via the umbral engrams by simply decoding them or focusing them to their specific engram but pretty much that's the god roll for fallen guillotine it, one i have here or if you want to get surrounded that works perfectly fine too you can also just get both of them if you're lucky enough to be able to get on the ending perks then good for you now i also masterworked mine mine came with masterwork of impact which was great i think they all do if i'm correct but I use this to kill numerous bosses. Uh, I think it's amazing because it's a legendary sword, so I always use it because it allows an opening for another exotic. Alright, so this is where I'm going to get into the builds that I kind of use specifically for me to help me do a little bit more sword damage. So the first one, right off bat, sword ammo reserve. It's great. I have two sword ammo reserves right here just increases my sword ammo reserve it can go from 64 which is what i had it normally up to 70 so that's just amazing right there and if you don't know every heavy hit is only for energy or for sword ammo so 
it, it's very useful to be doing that big hit you don't want to do the small hit keep that in mind that one doesn't too much if you're wondering on the chart in the bottom left you can see that it is just a simple bar that charges up once it reaches its highest one you can do your swing so that was what i'd recommend for just ammo wise that's not really too hard or too bad now mine goes up to 70 because i also do have another sword reserve because of the fact that i have one on my bond and i'm using this because it has taken armaments amazing for prophecy dungeon i do a lot of prophecy dungeon farming and i actually don't have the taken armaments normal mod yet so i've been using this that's why mine is at 70 yours might be at like 68. now I also have an enhanced sword scavenger. This is actually amazing. Uh, you can get it out of the artifact, just right down here. It is the second row, yeah, right here, enhanced sword scavenger. Amazing. Uh, it allows you to be able to, like I have these two on, and I pick, pretty much pick up 30 per every time I pick one up. And I yeah, pretty much get half of my sword ammo every brick. And that allows for a full damage phase, whatever I need it to do. It's absolutely amazing. Now, there are a few other things you can do to kind of work with this here. One I would recommend, you can get it out of the Prismatic Recaster. It's called Lucent Blade. Right here, I will pop it on. You can see all you need is, you don't even need Charge of Light for this. I don't, you can use Charge of Light, but it will increase your sword damage for five seconds, which is really nice to have, but you have to have an arc mod on. Now, well, you don't have to have an arc mod on, but for the one I would recommend it for, having an arc mod is recommended. Now, you can greatly increase the charge rate on your equipped sword. Why is this so good? Well, your charge rate is that little bottom part where you, know, you do your big spin. That's where you get a lot of your damage from it. You'll be able to do that a lot quicker. So, to show you, if you take this off, now we're to spin. One, two, three, four. It's gonna take me about four seconds to get up to that number. But if I pop this on, and now we have Lucent Blade with an arc mod. One, two, three. So it literally knocks it down an entire second, which is great. I don't think it stacks, so I think you can only have it on one piece of armor, but it is definitely worth putting on if you're gonna be using a sword. The only reason I have these boots on with the enhanced sword scavenger is due to the fact that uh, they have pretty decent stats. At least they don't have high mobility and high strength. So I'm okay with them. I don't want to destroy them quite yet. Plus it's masterworked. So that's why I'm using this. So with Lucent Blade, it doesn't have to be on the boots. It can be on any Seasons of Arrival armor that has like the ending part of the Season Arrival armor mod. Now. With that being said, I have it on my helmet right here, the Hold Fast cover. This one, it has Lucent Blade on it because it has an ending artifact mod with, uh, it is an arc too, so it allows it to have that. Now, let me see if I have any other pieces that I might be able to show you or demonstrate. Like this right here, I can pop it on. It is arc, season's arrival, bang boom, easy. Now, I won't do that as the gloves I have on right now are masterworked plus they have my hive barrier so it kind of helps me but you can pop it on pretty much anything from this season so it really comes in handy all right now to show you guys the damage that this outputs I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go over to uh good old ogre boy over here and I'm gonna go ahead he's at full health right now I'm just gonna simply do one heavy attack and I'll show you guys how much damage it does to him it does a little bit over half, and that's only for four sword ammo. So I can do it again, and he's just completely dead. Now you do have things like uh, Whirlwind Blade, which stacks after a few hits. So let's get it up, keep it going, one more. Okay, and now we can do a bigger spin, and you can see it did even more damage. So that's why I would recommend Whirlwind Blade. Surrounded's not bad, especially if you have a lot of enemies around you, then it's perfect. But for me, I recommend using Whirlwind Blade. Okay, I hope this helped you guys out. I kind of went over the god rolls and kind of a few things to help you guys improve your damage and just a few mods just to kind of help you guys out. I understand when I first started, uh, with the, especially with the new mod system, kind of was a little confusing, so helping you guys out is just a little bit there. But 
If you guys have any improvements I could do to this, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys found this helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you guys want more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button also. But I'm going to end it off here. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.